a man takes a long road trip with his family and stops at a random gas station. As he walks past the payphone, it rings. He answers, it's for him. An airman becomes a prisoner of war in Vietnam. While he endures six years of harsh captivity, a 16-year-old cheerleader prays for him every night. 40 years later, their paths cross in a 55,000-seat baseball stadium. According to best-selling author Squire Rushnell, these aren't mere coincidences, but divine appointments. He calls them God winks. So what really is a God wink? A God wink is a new little word in the language, and it's going to be in the dictionary very soon. And it is a word that means uh, a coincidence that really isn't a coincidence, that you know that it must have come from a divine source. And there's a second meaning for that word, God wink, that my readers led me to, and that is answered prayer. Do you know that there is no word in our English language for answered prayer? Mm. If you say a prayer, you get it answered, you have to say, well, I just had my prayer answered. Or you can say, I just had a God wink. Mm. So let's say someone has an experience. How do they really know? How can you really pinpoint and identify? You said it's not a coincidence. How do right. we know this is really a God wink? Well, a God wink is one of those experiences that when it happens to you, even if it's a little itty bitty, 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 bitty God wink, it has meaning to you and you know that there's no way that could just be chance. That couldn't be just an accident. It is God intervening. And I think of God winks like little gifts that are left at everybody's doorstep. And my job is to get you to open the door and open your gift. Yeah. You know, for me personally, this is very interesting because as I was reading the book last week, um, my goddaughter's mother called me and yeah. she's had some challenges. And so one of her mm -hmm. teachers said, you know, you really need to get this ball. There was this ball we played with as children where you bounce mm -hmm. on the ball. Yeah. I think that'll help her. And so her mother thought, where in the world am I going to find this ball? She's riding yeah. around looking for this ball. And she takes her to school the next day. And the teacher says, you know, Kimora has really been trying. We have this ball. And she is determined to win <laughs> on this ball. You can take it home wow. and let her play with it. Yeah. And I said to her, you just had a God wink. You just had a God wink. You had That's a God right. wink. Yeah. Now, let's talk about some specific stories in the book, because okay. one of my favorites is about Roma Downey, who yeah. most people know from the TV hit series, mm -hmm. uh, Touched by an Angel. Yes. Tell us a little bit about her story. Well, Roma Downey at that time was uh, untouched by an angel. It was seen in 20 million households around the country. So a lot of people recognized her. And she frequently went to children's hospitals on her off time just to visit children. And one day she was there and she was walking down the hall and she saw a woman, a bereaved woman being led from a room by a nurse. And she could see beyond into the room, a lifeless child's body on the bed. Oh. And she could pretty much size up what had just happened. And at that moment, the woman looked up at Roma, her, her face filled with hope. And she said, there you are. I ask God to send me an angel to let me know that my little girl is in heaven, and there you are. Now, Roma wanted to say, no, 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 I'm not an angel. I'm, a, I'm an actress. I just, I just play an play angel. play an angel <laughs> on television. No, no. Yeah. But she didn't. Yeah. She reached out, and she hugged the woman, and she said, let me pray with mm. you. So... Roma left the hospital a little while later, and she immediately called her friend Della Reese, her confidant, and she said, Della, I feel like such a fraud. There was this vulnerable mother, and she thought that God had sent me as an angel, and, and I feel like such a fraud. I didn't say anything to her. I didn't tell her the truth. And Della Reese said, honey, what makes you think you weren't? an angel at that moment, because sometimes God uses us, and sometimes we just have to get out of the way and let God work his way through us. At that moment, you were an angel. Yeah. 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 And that God wink was, was very important. It was very important for Roma. It was a very important lesson for her. And, 
and obviously it was uh, something that caused a peace that surpassed all understanding for that mother at that moment. Now that we know how to identify the God wings that we have, what should we do in response to it? What I always suggest people do when you're just uh, uh, new at God winks and discovering the God winks in your life, put a piece of paper on the refrigerator door and write down every God wink you get. And you'll be surprised after three weeks or four weeks, you'll have a long list of mm. God winks that you never, you say, hey, wait, God's been communicating to me all along. And so knowing that the God winks are coming at you all times will give you encouragement about going ahead in the future. Throughout life, throughout this journey, we have these moments where we see God. We learn things about him. Mm -hmm. What can we really learn about him through God wings? Well, I think the first thing is, is that you're never alone. You may think you're alone. Mm -hmm. The world may be crumbling all around you. You may be worried about Ebola. You may be worried about ISIS. You may be worried about your financial condition. You may be worried about a medical matter. You may be worried about your family. You may be worried whether or not you're going to still have your marriage together. But God is always with you, and he is communicating to you at all times. So you are never, ever alone.